Hello sports fans, I'm Harry and welcome to Harry's Stuff and Such. This is a fifth installment of my ANET A8 3D printing adventure. And today, if you stick around, I'm going to talk about installing the switch to the ANET power supply. Welcome back. So today, I'm planning on installing this power switch to my ANET A8 power supply. Now this is not the stock power supply that came with the A8. Uh, this is a 360 watt 30 amp power supply that I got off of Amazon. I also got the switch off of Amazon. And if you saw part four of my series on my ANET A8 3D printing adventure, I put a link for this power supply in that video, but I'll also add a link for it in this one as well. So today I'm going to start uh, installing this switch on that power supply. So here are some of the things you'll need. Switch of course, power supply of course. You'll also need some crimping tool, strippers, wire strippers if you have them. If not you can use an X-Acto blade or, or whatnot knife. Um, wire cutters would be nice. Uh, I'm also going to use the ANET uh, power supply cable that came with the kit. Uh, I'm going to reuse it so you'll need this in order to uh, cut lengths of wire that you'll need. You'll also need a uh, power cable. Your standard power supply cable that comes with most computers or it's just a three-pronged power cable. I have a lot of these laying around, but if you don't, you can purchase one just about anywhere. Yeah. Um, you also will need some uh, terminals to uh, clamp to the wires. I'll probably be using uh, I'll be using quite a, several different type. But um, if you don't want to use terminals and don't want to use crimping, you can also solder these uh, wires as well. But before I get started, one, one note. I'm not an electrician, and so anything that you do to copy me, you do at your own risk. Uh, never, ever play around with these power supplies when they're plugged in. It's a possibility of, of shock and our death. So as I say, I'm not an electrician, and if you do anything that I do, you do so at your own risk. In other words, it ain't my fault. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, some of the items that you're going to need to uh, perform this task is, of course, your power switch. This is the fused power switch that I'm talking about. You'll also need your power supply, of course. A few other things that are useful are some wire strippers. Uh, a utility knife or axo knife, exacto knife, um, crimping tools if you decide to use uh, crimps or, um, or a uh, um, soldering iron if you're going to solder uh, your leads. Uh, you'll also need a, a cover to some sort of a power supply cover so that you can fit your switch into and your power supply connected to. Okay, so what's first? Well, okay, so you need to uh, wire up your switch before you put it uh, to the um, power supply, connect it to the power supply. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I've got some couple of pieces of wire here that I'm going to go ahead and strip and crimp. Uh, if you don't have a nice uh, stripping tool, you can use a knife. Uh, that works. And then I'm going to twist these ends. It just works better if you do. I'm going to bring out my crimping tool. And then the particular uh, clamp 
our connector that I'm going to use is an insulated one and it looks like this one on each end you could also use the uh, uninsulated ones if you so desire but that just means that um, like this this is an uninsulated so these two are exactly the same the only difference is that uh, this has a cover that over this part uh, you would need to put some heat shrink over this uh, if you were, weren't using the ones that were already covered uh, that just helps to prevent possibility of shock hazard and again I want to reiterate that I'm not an electrician and so anything you do here uh, you do at your own risk uh, so having said that I'm going to go ahead now normally this would be white but I didn't have white so I'm using red instead but uh, you use whatever you would like you have white use white if you don't you know just know that, uh, that the first connection is going to be from this first pin over here which is the top of the fuse and that's usually a white wire so I've got this in my connector now and then all you have to do is crimp, crimp. sorry about that you're good to go give it a nice tug it's good and secure and so it will plug into this and then I'll bend it over and crimp it you can, now I'm using about a two inch piece of wire you could use a longer one if you want to it's sometimes easier to bend over um, but I just wanted to use the smallest wires I could there so that's the two ends crimped and like I said all it is is they, this one goes here that one goes there so there they're in place now, like I said you could have uh, used a little longer wire but there was no need to and when this fits in here there's just enough room that's another reason to use the smallest wire as possible okay so the second crimp is going to go from this second pin over to here for that I'm using the uh, some salvage line uh, wire from the uh, uh, ANET original power cord so don't throw that cord away save it and you can use it in the future so go ahead and strip the end of it off twist these line leads these two ends together get me two more crimps place them in the crimping tool again if you wanted to use solder go ahead and use solder it's whatever you want I'm not telling you how to do it I'm just showing you the ends that go together so that gets one so like I said this will slide in here and the other one will slide over here nice good crimp nice and taut so like I said if I can fit it in here sometimes solder works better but I just like nice little crimps it's nice and tight so that's to get these other three I've already cut some lines so these all three go into here one two three 
and I've already got the uh, connectors on this these three ends and they will connect to the line ground and neutral and power supply and then you will plug in your power to the uh, from your power cable and then you'll be able to just turn it on off on off and that will be good to go so all I need to do is to uh, add the uh, uh, crimp my connector to these three attach those and then I'm good to go So we've got all the wires connected, so we need to connect the ground to, gr uh, to the ground wire. To the yellow wire goes right here. That's the outermost, which connects up to the ground on the plug. It goes there. Line wire, which is the brown, connects to this. And then near neutral connects to the outer one by the switch. So that gets them all connected. One thing left to do now is connect them up to over here. Connect up the ground wire, neutral, and your line. And then I'll put that here. And we'll be good to go. And just to show that that works, we can plug in the power supply here. And don't do this because this will hurt if you touch it. But I'm just doing this just to show you. So now the power supply is on. I've got green light. So it's powered up. And that turns it off. So that's good. So now all I have to do is get this in to the case. And so there you have it. I've got my switch and my power supply cover connected up to my power supply. And the line, this will be the power line then that goes to the A8. I may or may not keep this power supply cover. It has, uh, I like it in some respects, and then there are some things I'm not quite fond of it. This back in the back needs to be maybe open a little bit it's going to be harder for me to uh, to connect up anything else to the power supply just because of the fact that i've only got this small slot and it's kind of hard to get things in here uh, without taking the whole thing off but it is what it is for right now and this is the way i'm going to try and use it so like I said, I've got it connected up so I can turn it on and off. So now I'm going to attach it to A8 and see how it looks. Well, okay, I've got the uh, power supply hooked back to my A net. I've, it's uh, working. I've got the switch installed. Uh, so now all I have to do in order to turn it on and off is 
reach back here, flip the switch to on, and the A net is working. And I can reach back here and turn it off. So now I have a switching power supply. And so that's how you can do that. And uh, it'll be a little bit safer than having the exposed power supply. So there we have it. I've installed the uh, power switch to the ANET power supply. And I have uh, the power supply cover uh, protecting the wires so there are no exposed wires now. And so you can safely turn the uh, ANET on and off with the switch as opposed to having to always reach over and unplug it and plug it back into the wall socket. That's a little safer, a little more convenient. Plus there is a, a fuse in line that will trip uh, before the uh, household circuit fuse trips. So that does make it the ANET a little safer. So if you've enjoyed this video and it's been informative and helpful, hey, give me a thumbs up. If uh, you didn't like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs down. That gives me a little uh, information into what people like and don't like. Also, think about leaving a comment uh, about improvements, uh, things you like what I've done, what you don't like. Like I said, I'm, uh, all the uh, items that you see on this channel, I've been spending my own money. This is all on my own dime, and I'm doing it for the fun of it. So if you would, go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well. I'm looking to get that first 1,000 subscribers. That would be great. And so until next time, I'll catch you guys on the backside.